All right, perfect. Thanks, Brian. Hi, I'm Deanne Yoshida. I am a senior marketing manager here at LaGrande AV. And we're going to kick off our webinar today. And this is a live event. And this is really helping houses of worship uh, find a way to thrive during the holidays. So uh, again, I'm Deanne, and I'll send it over to Brian. Uh, I'm Brian Rutzlaff. I am a uh, solutions engineer with LaGrande AV. And basically what that means is if you have a question about how to get some AV gear to work or, or how to make the LeGrand stuff all fit together, uh, the team that I'm on helps uh, solve those and come to you with a complete solution. And so I'd like to introduce David. Hello everyone, my name's Dave Johnston and I am the executive director here at Sermon.net and we work with ministries to take what is being captured and put it out to the internet through a bunch of different devices and we'll we'll jump into that a little later on. Thanks. Alrighty, great. Thanks so much, Brian and Dave. Let's get started. So I'm going to kind of set the stage with the thought that today and tomorrow are all about keeping people connected and that our industry, the AV industry, is so uniquely positioned to really deliver just that. And LaGrande AV Solutions supports technology that helps to maintain and enable human to human connections really in this world that we found ourselves separated by this pandemic. And despite all of the current challenges, houses of worship continue to keep members singing, believing and talking. And really through it all, congregations are definitely finding ways to continue to connect. So with many major holidays, just a couple of months away, houses of worship are really looking to move from that survival mode, kind of where they, they've come since the whole pandemic started and they're kind of settled into surviving in this right now. And they really wanna take it to thriving, which means that you know they're looking for ways to really uh, connect with their members in their local community and beyond. And we're here to help you see what that might look like as it relates to broadcasting or live streaming um, services to reach members and to really gain, help, help houses of worship really gain that uh, further reach in the community. But first, let's take a look at where houses of worship have really been in the past six months and how technology has played such a significant role in keeping people connected. So earlier this year, as all of you can well remember, I know it seems like longer than six months ago, everything came to a screeching halt, like literally, and all due to the coronavirus. Houses of worship all around the world closed their doors. And members were left feeling very lost and often unsure of where to turn or how to engage, suddenly disconnected from an often vital part of their daily life. And houses of worship had to scramble. Some of them didn't have any setups at all. And so you see them even taking services outside that really started to become the norm. And in this picture, you can see this was pretty, probably pretty early in the spring. There's not any leaves on the trees. So, you know, this was, you know, the setups that they were having to um, get pretty creative with. And things got even a little more creative. Houses of worship quickly had to pull together options to stay connected to members with things like drive through communion and drive up confessional. And I'm sure these were never things that they ever thought they'd have to think about. And congregations slowly moved from that panic mode into the survival mode that I talked about just a little while ago. And this was really with the use of technology to bridge that, that really vital connection. And so we have, you know, houses, um, houses of worship leadership, taking it, you know, into their homes, trying to find ways to connect uh, through uh, live streaming, sitting in their living rooms, or you know, just putting together a quick phone and tripod setup inside the house of worship, all kinds of different ways to try to connect with, with members in, in the community. And the, the members had to adapt too. A lot of these members never had to you know, sign on or log in or try to find a live stream of, of their um, of their Sunday service, they just showed up every every week. And so it was a learning curve for them too. And they're, I think they're finally settling in and now they're looking for ways to have a, a, you know, a really great experience, especially with the big holidays coming up around the corner. And so now with some of the restrictions um, 
being lifted. There are there are still things that are tough though. There are restrictions on capacity uh, within the, you know, how many people you can have in a building. These seem to change daily sometimes. And houses of worship are trying to really navigate this new normal. And the, the reopening is slow and it's really uncertain as to what is gonna happen, uh, you know, from a day-to-day -day perspective. And it comes with a lot of limitations sometimes. And often complications, you know, things that houses of worship never thought they'd have to think about again prior to March of this year. So with major religious holidays, again, just right around the corner, both in December of this year and then just bridging that gap into spring of next year, this is really where it becomes the perfect opportunity to take a house of worship and take them from surviving where they're feeling like they're maybe just standing under an umbrella and maybe maybe they're keeping dry but they're not getting out of the rain and now get them to the point where they really feel like they're thriving and this is where the weight's been lifted and the key messages that they need to deliver of hope and love and optimism can be delivered and maybe even to a broader audience you know an audience that they never really anticipated that they'd find and then extending the reach of that into their community and into the world is now possible. And really, again, this is all through that use of technology. So I know that you're all aware of a lot of these reasons, but I'm just gonna review quickly a few of these key reasons why AV is playing such a key role in keeping congregations connected and why live streaming is so important for houses of worship in today's new world. So of course, live streaming brings people together and you know, through the meeting of religion and community, even if they can't meet in person. And it reaches members during emergencies or pandemics like we're currently experiencing. It allows members who are elderly or injured, disabled, you know, the ability to watch from home and really participate if they can't attend in person. And you know, of course, for people who might be traveling when that starts to pick up a little bit again, it allows them to participate in their own faith community as opposed to really looking for a church or a synagogue in a, in a city that might not be uh, familiar to them. And then, of course, recording of live streams and on-demand playback is always available, which is great. But again, the, probably the biggest reason is extending that reach in from the, their community into the local community and even globally. So, now that we've kind of taken a look at houses of worship and where they've been in the past six months, moving from that panic mode into survival mode and finally striving for that thriving mode, um, this is how your role as integrators plays a really key component in assisting houses of worship navigating that often new terrain. So I'm gonna turn this over to Brian now and he's gonna walk you through how all of this can take place. Hello again, so thank you very much. Deanne. Yeah, so when we start talking about uh, the parts and pieces, um, as integration um, companies, you need to really kind of figure out what you're starting with. So as we move into this next slide, what we'll look at is it's almost like a puzzle of, of things that uh, you've got to kind of try to figure out and, uh, you know, what were the uh, short-term solutions that that customer had um, and that they're maybe even used to, and, and in some instances, very happy with. But yet, we want to get them to that point where they're thriving. So you can talk to your church customers, your house of worship customers, and say, look, um, you've got this solution, and, and you know that it's going to be a part of what you're doing for the long term. So what can we do to really get that to a point where it not only accomplishes your needs, but it helps you grow and expand and 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 be more of an outreach to the congregants that you have and the congregants that you don't have yet or the congregants that you're waiting to get, right? So we need to look at um, those individual pieces and start really putting a focus on this is more of a permanent solution. And uh, to make it permanent, you know, a good investment in good equipment with appropriate installation, so on and so forth, all of those things make this a solution that's going to help you thrive. Now, to get them started, and by the way, um, we have um, we've actually developed one of the one of the things you can download in the handouts is a needs analysis. OK, so if you have a customer and you want to get them all on the same page, because a lot of times you've got 
you know, the, the, the worship leadership, you've got the educational side of, of the church, you've got the actual congregants, and you may have other stakeholders, um, and they all have needs. And so you want to give them something to start with so that when you talk to these churches um, and, and their leadership, you're, you can all get on the same page very quickly about what problems they have and what problems need to be solved. And so a needs analysis is a great way to do that. It's just really about the who, what, when, where, why, you know, um, but yet with a focus, this particular needs analysis is a focus on house of worship. So maybe some extra questions there that are really, really geared toward helping you as an integrator find the right solution for your house of worship customer. Again, leading them through this transition as they move to a solution that will thrive. And so where we kind of want to start that conversation next, after we do the needs analysis, is um, helping them understand that you are a partner. As an integration partner, as a, a reseller, however you, you tend to look at yourself, you're, you need to, to be a really good partner with this church as they are trying to grow and as they're trying to, to thrive, right? So you need to let them know um, you have experience and you can help them avoid pitfalls. You know, things like the wrong size screen or a screen mounted in the wrong location, or there's no way to get a cable from here to there. Those kinds of things, you know, you can point them in a direction that helps them be more successful. Um, you can also, you know, provide them with a, a robust warranty. You can train the end users, you know, make sure you include, you know, in your conversations with the churches that, you know, you're going to spend all of this time creating a solution. Uh, making sure it's the right thing for them, getting them the solution, then actually installing the solution. Um, and then when it's all done, you are available to train them how to use it. Um, make that a big part of what you're doing for them. So they, again, get that comfort level and they realize you're a partner with them. OK, um, the other thing we need you as a partner to be is the expert. Right. You know more about this AV technology. Than, than they do most likely. And you need to bring that expertise to them and help them negotiate all of these other things that are going on so that you can get them a good solution, all right? So be a partner. And then part of that partnership is as we move on to what are the components that you're gonna help them provide, right? So this, this first thing we wanna talk about is really you know start to move them away from that little iPhone that's on the tripod that's way up in the front of the church to try to gather the information it needs to gather and move them again to that permanent solution. Something like a PTZ camera, uh, PTZ, pan, tilt, zoom. That means of course, you know, the camera can move left and right, can move up and down for the tilt and it can zoom in and it can zoom out, right? So um, a good appropriately installed PTZ camera can make all the difference um, and, and let them know that, you know, these current PTZ cameras have great optical um, you know, it, uh, lenses so that they can zoom way in from the back of the church or from the side of the church. Let them know that they have uh, the ability to be powered many times over a single category cable using what we refer to as you know, PoE power. Um, they have the ability to send their video, uh, their control, uh, their, um, their power, as we mentioned, all of that over a single category cable, very easy to install at that point, but very easy to maintain in the long term. And if the cable run is very difficult, it doesn't require a big bundle of cables. It requires just one cable, maybe having to be shown somewhere because you couldn't actually physically get it from here to there without it being visible, right? And those things make a difference, but those cameras with those features, those convenience features cost a little bit more money. So be open and honest with your house of worship customers that you wanna give them a good solution and good solutions sometimes do add a little bit of extra cost to, uh, to what they're doing, but the net effect is they will have a solution that's gonna work for them for years and years to come and be a great way to, again, allow them to thrive. Um, so with that, let's just take another look at, um, at what these cameras can look like installed. They can remind your customers that you can have them very discreetly installed. They can be white to match the, the white finishes they can be black to match the, to kind of almost go away. It's just such a dark thing that you don't really even see that it exists in that corner there, right? Um, let them know, you know, and help them figure out where to put those cameras so that the net effect is 
we get great video. All right. Um, but the video isn't nearly as effective if it isn't accompanied with also good audio. So when we talk about good audio, there is one key thing that we want to draw attention to, and that is most, most of these house of worships already uh, locations have some sort of audio system in place. And you as the integrator need to be able to look at that audio system and realize, oh, hey, I can take the feed right here. Maybe I can use a distribution amplifier. And so the same house sound, I can then feed into the streaming solution. Right beside that good video, we can maybe bring audio straight off of their soundboard. Maybe you can even point to the sound system they have, and it's maybe a DSP-based sound system. You realize, oh, hey, there's an extra audio output. So we can make a specific uh, uh, feed for the uh, stream. And one thing I like to mention is, you know, part of the stream is we want people to feel like as much as we can anyway, that they are a part of the service, that they are actually sitting in the sanctuary or in that synagogue, whatever it happens to be, they're sitting there and they are experiencing it like as if they were there, right? Well, that means we also need to hear some ambient noise. Most of these successful streaming solutions have an extra microphone that just hears uh, ambient noise, you know, the the paper shuffling and, and folks sitting and, and moving and and you know the pews rattling and things like that. You don't want that to be a lot of noise, but you want it. You want to be able to hear that because that's what we would hear if we were there in the situation anyway. Well, that's a whole separate mix than the mix that you have for the PA speakers. You don't want any of that noise going to the PA speakers. So if they have an audio system that can support an extra audio bus, whether it's a, a DSP or, or whether it's something like that, bring that to the attention of the folks that you're talking to in these houses of worship and let them know we can mix in a little bit of ambient audio to again, make this the connection between the people who are not physically there and what's going on in the physical sanctuary. Okay, so video from good video from a camera, good audio, which they probably already have a lot of that in place. So the third thing that we really have to consider here is lighting. Um, it doesn't matter how good the video camera is. If there is not enough light to illuminate that tiny little sensor, you know, the sensor I'm looking into is less than, um, it's actually very, very close to a half an inch by a half an inch. That's how big that sensor is. So all of the light information has to be focused down into that little tiny area. If this camera is 50 feet away from me, all of the light shining off my face diminishes in brightness as I get farther and farther away. So um, that light is critical. So in a lot of instances, you don't wanna have the video conversation and the audio conversation without also having a lighting conversation. Now, a lot of AV integrators are not lighting professionals. We, we get that. So you may have to call in um, another expert who can help with the lighting. A lot of our AV integrators are lighting professionals and actually do a great job supporting that. So it should always be a part of the conversation though. Um, without good lighting, we don't get good video. And without good video, we really don't see the details. And, uh, you know, um, it, you can tell I have a window over here to my right because this side of my face is quite a bit brighter. Well, if that's, you know, Sunday morning and you have an east facing window, that is going to be really, really bright, right? So you need to have enough front facing light that you can kind of overcome all of that. I have some extra light up here that helps fill my face with light. And so that's what we're really getting at. You know, a lot of times there's some extra spotlights in the sanctuary and they're used for spotlighting different things in the sanctuary. Maybe have a conversation um, to see, well, maybe they're not using one of those spotlights anymore. Maybe we can readjust those a little bit to get a little bit more light. But lighting is still critical and it is tricky to get right. Um, so then we've talked about these things that are critical. One other critical thing that we have is knowing who is going to operate the system. You know, if it's a large organization and they have somebody who's kind of an AV person who does this and it's their, their actual job to man the cameras and to fix the audio and all that kind of that, all that kind of stuff, you might be able to do a little bit more sophisticated operating system, you know, that has a little bit more functionality to it. But if it's a volunteer or we can't guarantee that we're going to get the same person to do it every week or at every service, then we need to make it very easy to use. So as of right now, I have not really talked about 
any name brands of anything yet, right? It's just been a very generic conversation about what you should be doing for your customers. Well, I'm gonna bring up a, a name brand right now. One of the Legrand brands is Vadio, and Vadio does make cameras, and, and Vadio does make great pan, tilt, zoom cameras. They also make this great video switching system that is so incredibly easy to use. You can see it on the picture there. And all it takes to use this is two taps of that touch screen. So you can train somebody very, very quickly. Tap number one is to configure the camera or, or to call the camera preset. And those presets, they're little gray boxes there. You can't see it in this picture, but they'd be labeled pulpit, uh, they'd be labeled lectern, altar, or whatever happens to be appropriate. And so step number one, hit that preset. And that points the camera where it needs to be located. Step number two is to hit that take button, which you see the person just about ready to hit. And that makes that camera go from being the uh, the camera that's that's um, what we call preview to the program. And so then that camera starts transmitting out its video through the stream. Very easy to use. So then the next time it's going to be uh, a different shot, they do the same thing. With a different camera, they choose a new preset, and then they hit the take button. And that's all it really has to be. And you can get an excellent, a fantastic um, stream with just knowing that you have to hit the button, you have to hit the touch screen twice. But the more advanced user who may be wanting to take it a step farther may want to use all those buttons and knobs and uh, the joystick that you see in the front of the picture, right? A little bit more sophisticated. So they may want to actually take the camera and make a little tweak left or right, adjust it up or down or something like that to make the image just exactly perfect, right? And so we give you that. They may want to tweak the colors. They may want to do a really fancy, slow, gradual move across the sanctuary to be a dramatic effect. And all of those things are possible with this same platform. Ease of use, but yet sophisticated use. And you can get that all with this Vadio platform. And so we recommend you have that conversation with your customer about who's going to be using this. Do you need the easy to use? Or can you do a more sophisticated use? Or maybe like most churches, you, you kind of have to have both for the high-end user and, the, and the, the volunteer who doesn't get a chance to do it very often. All right, so the next slide here is kind of about setting the expectations with your customer from a logistics standpoint. Um, one of the consequences of, of the virus um, and, and the pandemic we're in right now is that cameras are a hot commodity. They are very, very popular. They've been installed all over the place in education. They're being installed in courtrooms. They're being installed in uh, obviously lots of um, medical locations. Um, but we also have those now being installed um, in a lot of house of worship. That means there's a lot of demand for these cameras. So we need you to encourage your customers to order early. If they want this installed by the major religious holidays that happened at the end of this fiscal year, at the end of this calendar year, excuse me, they need to get those orders placed within the next few weeks so that you have time to place your order with us or whatever manufacturer you choose to go with. And you also have time to receive that equipment and get it installed. So we are kind of pushing that time frame right now. It is absolutely the right time to be pushing on your customer saying, if you want it installed by this time, you need to get the orders in now. And also we expect you to give really good, we, we want you to give good information to your customers about these lead times. It has nothing to do with what equipment they're trying to order. It has nothing to do with a specific brand or this or that. All the brands are having these constraints right now. And so you just need to be forward with them and say, you know, we may not be able to meet your deadline if you can't get us, um, you know, an order by this specific time because we won't get the product to install. All right. So that's kind of enough there. We just really want to make sure you understand the expectation there. Now I'm going to go into a little bit more on now we've kind of solved all the hardware part. Now let's talk about what the software does. All right. So live streaming um, is a um, you know, is it provides all kinds of functionality and flexibility. Right. So we can not only stream the service, we can stream just the sermon, maybe we want to stream uh, a Bible study on a Tuesday, maybe we want to stream things that are going on on Wednesday. The cool part about implementing all of this hardware is you get all kinds of opportunities to do other outreach to other subgroups of the organization. 
don't forget to mention that to your customers. It's not all about the Sunday service or whatever denomination you happen to be. It's not all about the weekly service. It is about the outreach and the extended, the extended capabilities now that you have. Now that you have a really good system that you can count on and that you can use to extend that. Maybe it's a daily thing that you want to do, a daily devotion every morning at 8 a.m. It's a perfect idea and it keeps your congregants engaged and it keeps them getting that hope and getting that thriving message that they need to hear from you. So the specifics of how those work, um, we're going to use uh, a technology called um, RTMP. And you don't necessarily need to know what that means. What you need to know is it is what takes the video and the audio and sends it somewhere so that your congregants can see that stream. Um, and we're gonna use an RTMP protocol. And I have this great little graphic in the next slide that kind of shows how it works. What we do is we start by collecting the video and audio in a camera or, and in microphones. And then we send that to a device, whether that's a, a laptop or some other device that creates this RTMP stream. And that, that, that laptop or that uh, device pushes that stream out to the internet to a server on the internet somewhere. And that server then takes that stream and is able to make it available on your website, potentially on YouTube or Facebook or where, wherever you decide it's most appropriate to, uh, to put that. Uh, the customer decides it's the most appropriate to put that. But um, one thing we do want to make sure we encourage you to always make sure they understand that they should be focusing in on their message and trying to eliminate distractions from their message. And I'm gonna let Dave talk more about not getting distracted from the message later on. So how do we pull all this together? And this is where I'm gonna really talk about some specifics that LeGrand AV can uh, bring to the table when it comes to hardware and when it comes to um, you know the, the specific components. So, um, on these solutions, what you're going to find is we have multiple parts and pieces when you download these solutions. We usually have part numbers listed. We usually show pictures of all the hardware, right? We'll show line diagrams, and each color line maybe represents a different kind of cable. And within that, like we may have a solid gray line that means uh, just a, a category cable, you know, uh, but it's not carrying network. It's just a Cat6 cable carrying something other than network, maybe. Um, we may also have a, a dot, a, a dashed gray cable that is computer network. We may have a gray and red cable that shows its network with power on top of it. So look at the cabling diagram so that you can see exactly what we're talking about. So as you're planning to run these cables through the, the church and or, or through the house of worship uh, facility, that you know how long it needs to be and you know how big it's going to be and how hard it's going to be to get it from point A to point B. And of course, the last piece of this is the service. Please don't leave your customer out in the loop when it comes to what kind of service they should be using. Again, we've got an expert on that coming up here in just a moment or so. So let's look at two specific solutions. This first solution is um, live streaming with iMag. Now, iMag, if you've not heard that term before, it is, um, in, in AV speak, it is shortened for image magnification. And basically what it means is you have a, a house of worship customer who they want to put cameras in and they want to have the, the subject of whatever's going on, whether it's a person talking at the lectern or wherever that person's talking. And they want to take that person's face and they want to put it up on a big screen there in the sanctuary or in the, the room that we're in, right? So you're seeing live, you're seeing an image magnification of the person speaking or the activity that's going on up on a big screen. The reason we differentiate iMag is we need to have very, very low latency. In fact, I'm, I'm pretty sure that with this a streaming platform that we're using right now. It's not an ideal streaming platform, go to webinar here, but there might be a tiny bit of difference between my lips moving and when you're hearing that sound. Um, and that really has, um, that, that has almost everything to do with the platform we're using, right? But imagine being in a sanctuary and you're hearing it live and a half or a fraction of a second later, you see those lips move on the big screen. That is not ideal. Um, it's just, it just, 
it really kind of makes people kind of uh, not feel right because they're not seeing what they're hearing. And so it just gives an uncomfortable feeling. So with iMag, we need to minimize that latency. And this solution allows you to minimize that latency. It's a very, very fast system. There's always gonna be a tiny bit of latency. You can't avoid it. Nothing is absolutely totally live. But this is so close to live that most people cannot distinguish. In fact, I would be tempted to say you can't distinguish between what's live and what you're seeing on the screen. Um, and so if they need that iMag, you need to make sure you look for solutions that have that very low latency. So the other parts of this is there's a couple cameras, one in the front, maybe one in the side, another with a long zoom in the back of the sanctuary. Notice those are two different cameras. They look identical, but one has a 30X zoom and one has a 12X zoom. With all the audio cameras, if there's a number in the name, that tells you how much zoom it has. Of course, the bigger the number, the farther it can zoom, the closer you can get, okay? A magic number there is 45 feet. Anything closer than 45 feet, you can typically use a 12X zoom. Anything more than 45 feet, you'll wanna jump up to a bigger zoom. Um, then the other piece of that is, you see everything's running through a network here. The rationale behind that is it makes it really easy to control this. Again, with just a simple little touch screen there uh, where you can uh, you know, touch screen control everything, okay? Uh, this is even a more simplistic solution than we showed a few slides back. Uh, we also then have the, the box, that kind of the brain of everything. Um, the audio is coming in there, the video is coming in there, it's doing the live switching back and forth. Um, it's also outputting directly an RTMP stream. You don't have to have an extra computer here. Uh, this could actually run without a computer and it has a box on the front that says stream. You hit that button, stream turns on, hit that button, stream turns off. Very, very easy if, if that's how simple you want it to be. But it also has a USB 3.0 output that can go straight to a computer. That computer can do the streaming to the service or that computer can record that service so that you can do some editing to it later. So this is a really nice, concise solution and you can download this through those documents that are available. Let's look at the second solution. This one is not really geared toward iMag because it has a tiny bit of latency, but it works great for overflow. Again, with the pandemic, we know we have to spread people out. Maybe more people want to come to the live service than we can fit in the space we have, but we have a hall or we have another space over here. We can actually use this solution to uh, take the video and audio, and instead of showing it live in the same room, we show it almost live in a room next door or a room over here. Uh, the latency is very, very small here, but it's just a little bit too much to show up on the big screen for iMac. But the cool part about this is this has three, three cameras in it with two different types of cameras. Another really cool part about this is these cameras are all just using a single Cat6 running into a network switch. Their power, their video, their control, everything is running through that single cable. So it's really easy to run just one single Cat6 to the camera, and that's all you have to manage from a cabling standpoint. Everything runs through the network. The network device, the Easy IP Mixer, takes all that network video, switches it, uh, adds in the audio, and presents your, your stream live. One key differentiator here between this solution and the one you just saw um, is that this one supports more cameras. You can have up to four total cameras with this solution, but it does not do the, the live, what we call seamless switching. This actually does what we call fade to black and fade up. It's really not disruptive or distractive. Um, it's just not exactly the same kind of setup that you saw the, uh, in the previous slide. Another key differentiator is this one, since everything is network driven and all the stuff is coming into this box via network, it doesn't actually stream RTMP directly out of this box. Uh, you do have to bring it USB into a computer so that you can get that stream uh, up to the service provider, the sermon.net type service provider that you're doing. So you do have to have a computer with this solution to be able to provide that stream out and to be able to record that stream. But these are the two primary solutions that uh, we're, fo we're focusing on today. Keep in mind, uh, Vadio, we can get you any number of great solutions um, and, and you can get in touch with us. One of the reference links we have has links and one of the links there is to bring you to a page on our website where you would actually, if you fill out the form, it'll, that email goes directly to me and um, actually the team that I'm on and we will respond to you very quickly with information and help you get up and going so that you can help your house of worship customers. 
So with that, I want to move on to a little bit different part of the presentation. And uh, I this is really a cool part. And when I was an integrator, and I'm going to do a little bit bigger intro here than I did for the last time when I brought Dave in. But, um, but this part is really cool because for so long I was an integrator selling these solutions to House of Worship. And I was like, well, you know, I just I can get you all the gear, but I can't really help you with the actual part that matters, which is streaming it out to your customers. Right. So this is that last piece, the very the most important piece is that final mile, getting the content to your customers. So with that, Dave, I'd like you to take over. Thanks so much, Brian. Hello again, everyone. Again, my name is Dave Johnston, and I am, again, the executive uh, director here at Sermon.net. So Sermon.net would best be described as an all-in-one, live and on-demand media storage and delivery solution. And it was specifically designed with the House of Worship in mind. Um, at Sermon.net, we, we consider ourselves an extension of the ministry's media team, and we're going to help them navigate through the different challenges, but more importantly, the opportunities uh, that this technology is allowing for. Um, all support with us is free, and we're going to hold their hands and help them uh, level that learning curve. Um, that's just the way we do things around here. So first, a little history. Uh, Sermon.net was founded in 2005, so we've been around a while. And in 2012, we became a nonprofit ministry. And over the years, we've helped thousands of uh, churches and ministries grow to grow with and adapt to the ever-changing world that is online broadcasting. It's really been pretty amazing to watch how quickly things are advancing in this arena. Um, a little story here to put things into perspective. When we got started, again, 15 years ago, uh, ministries would literally land mail their audio cassette tapes to us. Uh, which we would then digitize, turn into an MP3, and then upload to a player that we had put in their website. And we did this for each ministry week after week. So as you can imagine, an incredibly manual and time-consuming process. But thankfully, it was right around this time when ministries kind of started to wake up and realize, hey, the digital age is here to say uh, time to transition from analog to digital. So they went out and started to upgrade uh, their equipment to facilitate that shift. Um, and uh, as internet speeds and access continue to improve, along with the supporting technologies, equipment, and software, uh, we watched online broadcasting rapidly evolve. Uh, in just a few short years, it went from simply audio, then to video, and now to live stream with real-time interactivity. Uh, next slide. Um, now, we just heard about uh, some of the equipment and system setups that Legrand makes available. And at Sermon.net, we are that last piece in the media puzzle, as, as Brian said. Uh, we help the broadcaster take what's being captured through their audio and video gear, and then we make it available to their online audience. And this online audience, of course, can be located just about anywhere, whether they're in the local community around the block or if they're on the other side of the planet, really doesn't matter. Uh, they're going to be able to access the content in real time through a live stream or through an ever-growing on-demand digital archive that's being captured as part of the live stream, and that is both in audio and video, as well as supporting PDF and document files if they want to include them. Um, so from the very beginning uh, at Sermon.net, a key component or focus of our platform or approach to this has always been to provide a solution for the church that encourages the audience to access the media directly from the church's or the ministry's website. Uh, this is basically the church's online presence, and in some way it's their storefront. Um, and they they should not just be a Facebook page, and they should not simply always be forcing their audience to leave their site and go to a directory or a network that contains, of course, all sorts of competing content and distractions and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so it should be a goal of them to bring their audience back to their website, as this is going to allow the ministry to, to control the presentation and it also makes it possible for the guests and members to connect at a more intimate and informed level. And then this truly makes their site of value. Uh, for example, we suggest that they provide easy access to their event and activity schedule, uh, ministry programs and ministry, ministering opportunities, ties and offerings. Uh, these elements can obviously be more effectively highlighted and displayed through their own website uh, without all the unwanted distractions that the ad-driven platforms are full of. Next slide. When COVID interrupted the routine back in spring, it was pretty much overnight that online broadcasting went from being an option or a luxury uh, to becoming a requirement. Um, and so if the house of worship was going to remain open and accessible to their congregation or newcomers, this is just how it needed to be done. 
And as a service provider from our side, it was really awesome to see so many ministries rise to the occasion and quickly uh, act, stepping out of their comfort zone. Uh, to get started, some simply pulled out their cell phone and opened up their browser to a Facebook or YouTube. Uh, and of course, this was a great way to uh, introduce them to the process as they were quite literally being forced to learn something new and figure out how to do it, how to do it differently. Um, but what we're seeing now is it's becoming apparent that from this point forward, an online church option for the ministry's internet audience is a must. And it's going to continue to be an important, if not essential component of every ministry's outreach and access strategies. Uh, there's a whole new type of church goer out there now. And this is, brings with it opportunities to connect and grow. Um, even the elderly are starting to really adapt and, and coming to see the internet as a place where church can and now does happen. And we believe and hope that this experience and the adjustments it's required are going to help the church truly thrive in a new way moving forward. And of course, we're here to help with that. Next slide. So all that being said, it's now more important than ever that the church maintain control over their online presence. It's, it's again, one of their most valuable resources, and this is going to help them stay connected and relevant in these changing times. Uh, and we tell them the Sermon Studio, it's their media platform. It's an autonomous solution, and it serves as their safe home base or a media control center. There's not going to be any ads. There's not going to be any policies that may censor or block their content. There's not going to be any de data mining of their audience's information. And it gives the viewers the option, again, to go directly to the website. And once there, of course, we suggest the, the, the church or the ministry to treat them well, encourage them to help with the missions and the purpose. Uh, perhaps they can provide some exclusive content through their site beyond what's available on the social networks. This to encourage uh, more direct visits and involvement. All that being said, of course, we do definitely recommend that they continue to use Facebook and YouTube as desired for increased outreach and exposure. And we're gonna help them automate this process. Uh, what we say around here is you go fishing where the fish are, but at the same time, you want to have that safe home base that doesn't depend on a secular platform and its ever-changing policies. Uh, they should not leave themselves at the mercy of these uh, social networks. Uh, th those social networks are not interested in that ministry's message. Uh, they just want the ministry's audience so they can become their audience and uh, sell their information to the advertisers and marketers. So at Sermon.net, one, one of our claims here is that we share the mission and values of the church, and we're going to help them leverage those platforms but not rely upon them. Next, next slide. So again, we heard Brian talk about sending the stream from their location using RTMP, either directly from a hardware streaming device with a press of a button or through RTMP encoding software such as OBS, vMix, Wirecast that would be running on a computer system. So what happens is we're going to receive or ingest the RTMP media stream, and then we're going to make it available to their audience simultaneously through their own website, through their Facebook and YouTube channels, through apps for Android, Apple, and Roku. We're also going to provide them with an HLS live stream playback URL that they can use in third-party apps and players. Following the broadcast, we're going to archive a recording of the live stream in whole or in part, for the audience to access or share at a later time. Uh, some ministries prefer to stream their full service, but only archive the message portion. And that functionality is built into what we call their sermon studio, which is a browser-based user interface. Uh, when we archive the video, we're also gonna create a companion audio file to go along with it. Uh, this is super convenient for those in the audience that would rather take the audio file with them and listen while on the go. Um, the archive media uh, can be made available through RSS and podcast feeds uh, that can be submitted to directories such as Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify. And the secret here is that all of this can happen automatically, or that's the real power of it, meaning we're going to significantly simplify their workflow and give their audience many points of access and make it easy, whether it's a seasoned pro managing the software or a volunteer. It's going to be super simple. Uh, we provide them with players for individual media files, as well as direct links to their MP4 video files or MP3 audio files. Uh, with no redirects or hidden tracking, this makes it easy to email or text a direct link to their online media, if that would be uh, simpler. Um, they can embed live stream players directly into any website using the iframe embed code we provide, 
or into specialized part, third party interfaces such as the church online platform that a lot of churches are using these days. Uh, furthermore, they can group their content into playlists, which are basically channels for different ministries or groups within their organization. For example, they may have a channel for their Sunday morning worship media, another one for their youth groups, or perhaps for a daily devotional. They can have as many channels as they would like, and these channels can even be password protected if they have content they want to limit access to. Each channel can have its own player, podcast feeds, and live streams all happening at the same time. Uh, we also provide them with the ability to create uh, unlimited media centers for their content. A media center is, is a player that includes a variety of tools or widgets for their audience, such as a live chat module, an integrated Bible, uh, private user notes so that they can use it as a study tool, uh, sort and search functions uh, to make the archive more, more accessible, uh, and custom links to additional content if they want to pass that along. A media center can be used for just one channel or for multiple channels. So they can basically create a, a whole network of channels for their content. Next slide. So just quickly touching on prices, our prices were priced for the church, churches of all shapes and sizes, and we have a nice low entry point for those churches on a smaller budget. Um, uh, they start at just $30 per month with up to 100 gigabytes of usage. And depending on the streaming bit rate, uh, this plan would allow them to stream to approximately 20 people for one hour, 10 times per month. Uh, but we have several larger usage volume discounted plans available as well, depending on the, the ministry's needs. Uh, they can use the Sermon Studio as a primary, as their primary media platform, or just use it as a backup in redundancy, uh, just in case something happens to their social network accounts and the content either gets temporarily blocked or possibly even removed. And of course, this is an excellent option to provide for their viewers that would rather just avoid Facebook and YouTube altogether. And in this age of aggressive data mining, this is becoming a more significant factor. Uh, we're going to provide the ministry with a free, no obligation, two-week test drive with full onboarding support and all this at no cost. We want to make sure we're a good fit for them before they commit to us. And just so you know, as an integrator, uh, to say thank you for anyone that you introduce and becomes a client, uh, from the third payment, we will send you a 15% uh, gift as a, of their license fee as a token of our appreciation. So again, that's pretty much my, my, my talk here. Uh, I want to thank you for your time, and uh, please reach out to us with any questions you have, and we look forward to uh, working with you and, and helping you satisfy your clients. All right, great. Thank you so much, Dave. That was uh, a nice presentation, and Brian, appreciate that. So I just want to go to um, our last slide here. Um, really, it's going to be uh, questions and thank you, but I'm sorry, quickly before that, I want to just call your attention to uh, the references links. And so on these references links, there's some things that are really important. This is the, the top one is that project council that Brian was talking about. And if you click on that, it'll take you to a page where you can uh, fill it out just quickly and it'll send a, a message straight to uh, Brian's team's inbox. Uh, then the solution diagrams are the second link. There's also a flyer that uh, was also part of the handouts. That's the needs analysis. Um, on PTZ cameras, just really kind of a very all-encompassing um, piece of information there. And then the House of Worship uh, resource page on the Grande V, as well as a quick article. And then if you want to connect with Dave, straight through sermon.net would be the easiest way to do that. So thanks again, everybody. Have a great day. Stay safe. Thank you. Bye-bye.